Welcome back here to Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora live on site, on location at Abercoli's Restaurant at the corner of Route 57 and Wetzel Road in Liverpool, New York. Walking distance from Liverpool High School right up the road and we are here every single month with Liverpool Warriors athletic programs from the student athletes to the coaches as well as the administration. And we're very happy to have for the first time ever the Liverpool girls swimming and diving team showcased today on Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora. We have diver Aya McIntyre, and we have somebody who uh, I used to link up with in the trivia world, Will Chidsey, the assistant coach of this team. So can we give a round of applause for Aya and Will, please? <laughs> Will, from what I can remember of you, of our times together, you're a very mellow person, and I could see it on your face. How many times have you been on screen? Uh, not often at all, if at all, I can avoid it at all costs. Okay, make sure you keep that close. Yeah. And, uh, yep. <laughs> How close has it got to be? There we go. There you go. You're all good. right. You're good now. So, you have the connection to Liverpool, and a deep connection to Liverpool. What can you say about your history with Liverpool and what the Warriors mean to you? Uh, well, my connection is very positive. Um, I, I like to say it's shaped who I am today. Um, it's taught me very valuable lessons. Um, and the more important lesson I've lost, win, lose, or draw, always keep your head up high, respect your teammates and your opponents, whether you win or lost. Leave your best stuff in the pool. For you to have the history there and have the passion there, I mean, how, how easy was it for you to come onto Dave's staff and be a part of this? Uh, not hard at all, actually. Dave and I have coached for many years together uh, very well. Um, we work rather seamlessly. And... Uh, Obviously, both Dave and I applied for the head coaching position, and when I, we realized each other applied separately, which we were unaware of, um, we kind of came up with the idea that this would be how it ran, and this would be the best approach moving forward. So you both applied for the Liverpool job and didn't know? No. We have, over COVID, we haven't really talked in a while because we haven't been coaching together because of the situation with the pools. So when you both found out, what was that conversation like? Like it would have been the day after COVID started. No different, picked up, made the call, said, hey. He's like, yeah, I don't know. It's really no different. It's weird, it had been almost a year since we had talked. Yeah. And it was like yesterday we were coaching on the deck together. So what made it fit that it was, okay, Dave, you be the head coach, I'll be the assistant? Uh, well, I have the club team that I coach in the evenings as well. And uh, Dave is a bit more organized than I am. And he's been obviously coaching a lot longer than I have as well. Um, and he's, with my history with Liverpool, would be a very good fit as head coach. I knew that going forward, and I was very comfortable following his lead on this. I'll give you a break from the mic that you love for a second. Hiya, uh, yeah, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing very well. So, the diver representative tonight on the live show, what does it mean to you to be a part of this team? To be a part of this team has definitely got me a lot of more friends and it's been with me almost like my whole life. I started off doing like swim clubs and everything for Liverpool from like jets. I did jets for a little while. And then my sixth grade teacher at the time was, I think he was modified swim coach before he moved up to varsity and he was like, you should try diving. So I joined the dive team and I made a bunch of unbreakable bonds with the whole team and the coaches. What would you say has been your best memory of being a part of the diving team? My best memory was probably making varsity. I made varsity my freshman year at our very last meet before sectionals, and our whole team made it that year. Like So many people were making it, and I was like, oh, I want this cut so bad. And it was like our last meet to make it before sectionals and state quals. And I made it the very last meet, and we didn't, I don't even, I think both of our coaches were out at the time too, so we had like sub coaches, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. But I made sectionals, and from sectionals, I made it to state quals too as a freshman. So state qualifiers as a freshman yes. means blank to you. What can you? How would you fill in that blank? Oh gosh, it's crazy to me because I didn't think I went in just like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna die. It's gonna be fine. I was so scared I wasn't gonna make varsity because at the time I was very scared of the board and also scared to do so much stuff. But once like that all hit me, I was like, okay, we can move up from here. So you do that as a freshman. So what does that create within you as far as competition of wanting to be your best self every day when you have such a high mark at that point? 
it definitely pushes you so much. It wants, like, it's almost like a more of a goal. So you just want to keep going back every year. And you meet so many more people, like, competing, and you have so much more new competition. So as you get better, it just brings you up, and you just want, you want to achieve more. Fair enough. Tell me something good about Will Chidzik. Oh, well, right now our diving coach is out for the week. So Will has stepped up, and he is now our diving coach for the whole week. And he's really been such a good coach, and he's very funny and really loves to tell me to point my toes. And, yeah, so I'd say he's a really good makeshift diving coach for right now, and he's a great swim coach, too. Okay, fair enough. That was a very kind response. So, Will, tell me something good about Aya. <laughs> So out of the short time I've known Aya, she can always, always smiling, always positive on the pool deck, and always wants to get everybody going harder. I want to say it was like fourth, fifth practice, you picked up the mic and just started telling people what to do. Very comfortable. So you see leadership within her? I do. And all the captains, actually. So to be named a captain is an honor that you obviously know how deep that, that root can go. Why is Aya worthy of being a captain? So, I believe captains aren't just individual, um, and when you look at the trio of captains that we have, they all complement different things. And Aya brings one aspect of being a captain to the team that is very essential, and it'll be very comfortable to know that she's there for the kids that are under her throughout the entire season, which is very important. Fair enough. I, you just heard Will say that it's a not just one person being a captain, but it's it's a group. What can you say about your group? So our group, just as a whole team, like we all want to push each other to do better and push each other to our limits and past our limits. And especially with all the freshmen now, like we're still new to everything. It's definitely important to get them going, make sure that they have like a positive outlook on the team. It's their first year and they have no clue what to expect. So it's definitely like my job to make sure that everyone feels warm and welcome and all like inclusive to the team. How long ago does it feel like when you were a freshman stepping out there? Oh gosh, it was almost four, yeah, four seasons ago. So I came in and I was like the smallest girl on the team. Like I was so little and I was not tall at all. And everyone was like, oh my god, she's so little, she's so small. And so all the seniors, who I still keep in touch with now at the time, they were like, you gotta get stronger. And so they put me in the weight room, and my first weight room, I was put with all the seniors. Not even with the freshmen, they were like, you need to do higher weights. And I was pushed up to my limit, so that's my goal, to make sure everyone else has the same push and drive to be on the team. Coming full circle, for you to know how the seniors pushed you, and now to be in that role, what's it like to be in the reverse role now? The reverse role is, well, it kind of just brings me back because everyone pushed me. And I was like, okay, well now I see these girls coming up. And most are still brand new to like all the whole swimming and diving thing. And I know there's a little diver who's a freshman now. And she reminds me so much of me because when I came in, I didn't really know much. But as soon as I had seniors pushing me and pushing me to do my best, it definitely feels like I have to do the same, just like give back to what happened to me. Who is the little one that reminds you of you? Her name is Brianna. She's a little diver. I don't remember her last name, but she's a freshman and same boat as I was. Do you see potential in her? Yes, I do. I think with just more practice, because we've only been a week in the season now, and she just started about a week ago, and she already made so much improvement. Fair enough. Back to you, Will, for this. As we are here at Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on site on location at Abacoli's every month with the Liverpool Warriors athletic programs. And we appreciate the student athletes, the administration, and the coaches for being here with us on the corner of Route 57 and Wessel Road in Liverpool, New York. Will, your passion for the pool started when? Not until I was much older, actually. I swam in middle school. I uh, was forced to uh, swim my freshman year by my parents. And uh, after that, I had to choose between three different sports. Always loved the water, but until I would say sophomore, junior, and high school, I didn't really start growing that strong passion. Why did the passion grow? Um, so a lot of sports 
are not, I would call them pure like swimming. Swimming is such a pure sport in the essence that you do your time and you own your time. You don't have anybody taking that or judging you. Technique, how can you, how can you teach that? How do you utilize the art of swimming? Because I think it's such a beautiful, not just a sport, but it's, it's an art form. So how do you teach that art form? That's a very complicated question. In the essence that every everything's a little different than what we teach, but ultimately you break it down into small things that the kids can relate to. If you can't get them to relate to what you're doing, they're not going to take grasp of it. And over the course of the 15 years of coaching, um, it's turned more verbal into things that they have to see in visual. And if you don't bring that visual aspect into coaching, a lot of the kids won't get what you're talking about. So, I, uh, do you have moments where you say, I don't, and I know as your makeshift coach right now for diving, but, but do you ever have moments with a coaching staff where you say, I don't get it, you gotta show me? Okay, so diving, I'd say, is so much more to show than say. So, like, sometimes it's very confusing to, like, transfer from words to, like, what I'm supposed to do in the air. But I feel like you just have to, it's always a hit or a miss. You have to try things and adjust things and just, I don't know, get a feel for it because it's so much harder to stick. It's easier to explain than do because I know like none of the coaches have like gotten the water and like shown how to dive. Like you just have to figure it out. Right now. What has been your biggest challenge? Oh, my biggest challenge. Um, to be something like specific. Biggest challenge within the swimming world and diving world. Okay, so I started off swimming actually. My neighbor, well, my neighbors, the Testones, their older sisters have both swam for Liverpool. And so Nikki and I got in it young and we did all these swim camps. And so I'd say adjusting from swimming to diving, because I used to be like just a swimmer. I would only swim. And I would do like all like the Jets camps, I would do Jets, all like the little intramural things after school. So I know swimming, going from swimming to being like a gymnast and dancer as well. I was like, you know what, we're just going to try diving. So that adjustment, I think, is definitely hard for me because I know my freshman year, I swam and dive, so I did swim practices and dive practices, and going back and forth between the two, I would just feel like a wall. So I was just like, oh, I don't know what to do. So I think my ultimate goal is, like, I got picked one, and I was like, you know what, we're just going to go dive and see what they're doing. Fair enough. Well, what has been your biggest challenge in the swimming world? As a swimmer, or as a coach, let's do both. Both, well, why way to complicate it? <laughs> um, be honest, as a challenge as a swimmer, I didn't find many challenges. I, I was in a way that was negative, so I guess it's hard to remember because you really only remember the negatives in my head. Um, I can say that my freshman year was at the time a hard concept that I had to struggle with, and that was one of two losses we had in our four years of high school, and that four, three of our seniors were suspended, and we lost the meet because of that. And that was a hard thing to wrap your head around, but now, looking back on it as I get older, um, I hold that very valuable to me, and that, that concept of what happened and why. Um, and I try to bring that into my coaching experience and how I coach and holding that to a high standard. Um, as a coach, I struggle sometimes with trying to relate with the kids now as they change because every year they're a little different and they're evolving and as a coach you have to evolve with them and if you don't, you end up becoming kind of obsolete with the swimming world and coaching aspect. How do you change? How do you, how do you evolve as the world evolves? So. A lot of people, again, it's just kind of listening and, and looking at, the, at what's in front of you and talking with the kids about how they're relating and, and really trying to get to know them and say, hey, is this working? Is this not working? You're not the dictator as the coach. You're just part of the team and listening to what they need. COVID has been an interesting world for all of us. 18 months has made, hopefully, us appreciate things that maybe we didn't appreciate before, maybe make a few more phone calls, maybe make a few more visits, maybe go after the things that we actually want in life. How has 
How have the last 18 months affected you, Will? So the last 18 months have been actually rather rough. We're still dealing with it now. It hasn't changed. Um, it, we were a while without pools. Um, and being though swimming is what I do for a profession, um, coaching and, and running clubs and meets, um, it's hit me rather hard. But um, it's, it's definitely getting a little better. And hopefully over the course of the 12 to 18 months, we start to feel a little normal to what normal is. Um, but it's, it's, it's been rather hard, uh, not having facilities and swimming open water and buying kayaks out of Massachusetts just to get water down somewhere has been uh, a real struggle. And I think that that's something that not a lot of people know about. I don't want to go to you in this, you know. Did you ever think there was going to be a world where you couldn't just go to the pool and practice? I know, it's so weird. Especially like, well, are we at, are you seeing this usually in the fall? And we had ours in the spring last year because of COVID. When we started last school year, everything was so horrible and we still wear masks. And we're only going to school about once a week. So learning definitely took a curve on that. And I know so many people didn't participate in like practices and stuff just due to grades and juggling the two because practice times were so different. Divers for some reason weren't allowed to practice together, but we were only allowed to do meets. And I know having like people come to our meets, we weren't allowed to have a full capacity of like people, so it was definitely very quiet. We usually have so many people cheering. And even then, like our season, we couldn't do a lot of things, like use certain facilities, like weight rooms and certain equipment without cleaning it, or making sure that there weren't other people in there other than just the swim team. We had to pull out COVID sheets just to work out. It was definitely so different. We had to socially distance in the pool. <laughs> yeah. Which is very strange. I can't, I can't even imagine that. And so for you, what did you learn the most about yourself in these last 18 months? In the last 18 months, I'd say I learned to appreciate little things in life, like seeing family, because I know once the lockdown happened, I couldn't see my grandparents, and we see them every weekend for dinner. We have like a tradition, we see them every Sunday. So I didn't see them for almost a year. I know it's very different just to do things on social media, like FaceTime, just texting. It's very different. I learned to appreciate like school and learning so much more as well, just because everything was all online. It was definitely hard. Yeah, you would think that uh, that uh, you know, from the outside looking in, and for somebody who's already been through high school, you think that people would be like, "Oh, it's got to be great to be at home," but it's harder to learn because your teacher's not right there. You can't just raise your hand and ask a question and stop class and whatnot. And it's it's hard for a teacher to keep your attention, and it's hard for you to understand. And I can't imagine how difficult that was. How how difficult, in your opinion, has it been? Um, I know for some people it was harder than like it was for others. For me personally, um, doing online school didn't bother me. I've always been somewhat of a good student to keep myself organized, so I just did the same thing I would do at school at home. I had a desk in my room, I made sure all my stuff was organized, studied for tests as well. I know some people just got to the point where they were just like, oh, I'm giving up. And I know it was so much harder just to get a hold of teachers and do like simple things like homework. So you had to turn stuff in online, so with that comes a lot of problems. Like there were days like where your computer just wouldn't work, and you're like, well, what am I doing? It was just too hard. But overall, I think I did okay, but I know it affected some people much more. And I'm not going to mention the name of the internet service in our community, but I think we all know that it's terrible. And it's still terrible, so for the love of God, please send everybody back to work. So, Will, I want to go to you for this for a second. You know, seeing what these young men and women had to go through, could you imagine looking back having to do with what they've done? And what would you have thought about being socially distanced, being at home, not seeing family for a year that maybe lives down the street, having to do everything on a tablet? What do you think? I, I probably would have enjoyed it at first because I wouldn't have had to be in person in a class and talking in front of a group. Um, but experiencing it myself, um, being a business owner with coworkers, we used to work remote. And after two or three years of doing that, you drive yourself crazy being by yourself all day in front of a screen talking to everybody. And then once you go into the, the, the room or the, the office with people, there, there's something about connecting with people. And I think that that connection is very important with these kids because if they don't have that connection, they don't learn how to come out of the shell a little bit and force them to, which made me, because if I was in eye issues right now, I would have uh, faked sick and not been here tonight to have to talk on this mic. So it's kind of forced me to be a little more comfortable in these settings.
Fair enough. Before we get into rapid fire, which I know Will's gonna love, what does it mean to be a warrior? Because you know in a bunch of different ways. What does it mean to you? Integrity in class. Hold your head up high, it doesn't matter what the outcome is. Uh, you put your best effort forward and, and you see where the cards lie. I mean, that's... I like that. Integrity in class. Aya, what does it mean for you to be a Liverpool warrior? To be a warrior to me is just dedication and unity. Because everyone's always together. We're all, like our team, we're always doing stuff together. We're all so close. It's not like it's just like, oh, freshman year, sophomore year. Like, we're all close. We all intermix and we can all get along. So, definitely be unified. Okay. Unified, integrity, and class. I love all those answers. From Anna Coley's Wake Up Call with Dan Tortora on site with the Liverpool Warriors girls swimming and diving team. It's time for rapid fire. Two questions apiece before we get to coach. All right, you have the mic, so I'll go to you first. Okay. You are looking at colleges right now. What's on your checklist? I, I ask recruits this all the time. What does a school have to have to even be in your final two, final three, whatever it is? Okay, so right now, I like schools that are kind of like, not like in a city, but like close to a city, so there's like resources available to you, like stores, um, definitely like, they have to have a good gym facility, just for like working out, and I don't know if I'm going to dive in college yet, but I've been looking at the pool to see how nice they are, but yeah, I'd have to say like somewhere in like a town or city that's pretty busy, because I like constantly interacting with people and meeting new people and just like a lot of busyness. Okay, so you like the busyness. What's your first one for me? Um, what is your favorite store to shop at? I've never been asked this question in 18 years. What is my favorite store to shop at? Or like brand. Oh, favorite brand. Well, I mean, I think brand by mistake, I mean, it, it's not like on purpose. Nike is not on purpose. Under Armour's kind of more on purpose because I like the rock stuff, but the, my stuff, which I'm wearing right now, is Nike. And we had like a lot of dry fit with Nike, so I've had Nike my whole life. I have Nike shoes on. I always end up with Nike shoes, so I'm probably gonna say I like Nike a lot. But for favorite store to shop in would probably be, and it took a giant hit during the Rona, but. I like me some Target. <laughs> I do. I, I like Target. Target's okay. But, uh, yeah, but I said I was a Disney fan before, and I shop all over Disney, and, you know, Will's, Will's buddy Eric can attest to the Disney passion, so I think I, it's a dangerous world. My favorite stores are probably in Orlando and Walt Disney World. All right, fair enough. I like that. Okay, your next question will be about that. Will? What would you consider to be your single greatest accomplishment? Probably my most memorable moment was being able to go to nationals at college with my brother who came there as a freshman when I was a senior. We missed the first two relays and made the last relay of the meet. We made it by a split second. And we were able to go together. That was probably it. That's pretty impressive. Swimming purpose is thinking swimming world. Yeah, no, and I think that that's, that's a movie worthy moment right there. What's your first one for me? If you could do one other thing professionally other than what you currently do, what would it be? Already working on a bunch of stuff, so I'll, I'll run it. <laughs> I'll run it. So, uh, songwriting and singing is something that's been a part of my life since I was, I've been singing since I was three. I've been writing music since I was 14. And I would say screenwriting and acting, I've been able to do a little bit of that on stage, and then I got to be an extra in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 with Andrew Garfield, which was cool. And then I would say, uh, definitely, probably the next one is, is, is stand-up. I got a lot of things in my, in my brain that I need to unpack. So, there's, there's a lot coming, and I think in the famous words of my mother, nobody's safe. So, it's gonna be fun. All right, well, I'm gonna stay with you for the, uh, my last one for you. If you, you had to choose one of these three jobs and tell me why you're going to choose it. You could be the President of the United States, a stand-up comedian, or you can travel the world being a public speaker. Well, it would definitely be... <laughs> 
You had to pick all public serving places. I did, I did. So Everything all of them are bad. Everyone where you have to get out of your comfort zone, yeah? It would have, to, and this is, I, I don't want to be it, but I would have to be the president because I just, some things they do are not logical, and I'm a very logical person, and it bothers me. And I feel like they don't listen to the people that they should be listening to. Yeah, I think, uh, what, is it, what is it that the declaration starts with, we the people, but very rarely do they ever care about the actual people. Yep. So that needs to change. What's your last one for me, Will? What would you do right now if there was a Chucky doll across the table from there? So you remember? I do. Okay. I, I tried to get one for this meeting when I saw you, but I couldn't find That's one. That's horrifying. Hour. And I'm very upset that you didn't even think of that. If there was a Chucky doll sitting across from me right now, I, I'm a person, I have a very strong faith and I have strong belief in God. So I always say if the devil himself was up against me, I'm fighting. So I'd have to sit here and do the show with Chucky. But with that being said, he can't see me leave. He can't see my car or my license plate because I do believe he'll follow me home and he'll case my house. And I can't let him know where I live. So somebody brought, like as a joke, you know, Dal to the house. And, and I said, leave it in the garage because if this stupid thing comes in the house, it's going to remember the outline of my house and it's going to know how to get in. And so I, uh, I gave that up. I made sure that they took it with them when they left, and I'm a firm believer that if it looks like a human and it's not a human, I don't want it. So, my ch and I had a vivid Chucky nightmare one night, and it was, it was just too much for me. So, thank you for remembering that, and I'm gonna work my way out of out of that pain tonight. Well, appreciate it. Aya, you brought up Disney. You love Disney. I do love Disney. So, what do you love the most about Disney? That's not my question. It's gonna provoke my question. Okay, I like, I like the castle. It's so pretty, and I love the fireworks shows at night. Okay, so, Magic Kingdom. What is your favorite ride at Magic Kingdom? And what is your favorite fireworks celebration, since they keep changing? And I just came back a couple weeks ago, and allegedly I just saw one that they're getting rid of in like two weeks. So. Okay, so last time I went to Disney was right before COVID, actually. Okay. Your Thanksgiving. And... We rode Space Mountain about a hundred times. We love that one. Um, and my favorite fireworks show, we went actually right after Thanksgiving, the day after they had Mickey's Christmas party. Oh, yeah. And that fireworks show was amazing. Fair enough. Have you ever seen Space Mountain with the lights on? Oh, yeah. Oh, you have? Oh, That's yeah. horrifying. It Looks like you're in a hamster cage. Yup. It's very... I went on it when half of it was lit up, and I don't know why. I don't think it was on purpose. And I don't ever need to know how. Cl I'm five foot eight, and I so, felt like it was gonna. Oh, it looks like it's gonna like chop your head off. I don't off. do that one. Did you don't do that one? I think I'm too tall. Okay, fair enough. What's your last question for me, Anya? If you could travel anywhere out of the country, where would it be, and why? Anywhere in or out? Oh. Out of the country. Going to see family, and even more so now than ever, Italy and Spain. So we have family in both. My family in Spain actually has watched the show and listened to it. So shout out to Jose and Anna Maria and my entire family in Spain. And uh, I would, I just want to, I want to go see them. I want to see where I came from. And I heard that it's beautiful. The food's good. There's no complaints. So I, I think I'm gonna go. And I watched my cousins spend most of their days playing soccer on the beach. So I think I need to go to Spain. <laughs> yeah. So for Will Chinsey, assistant coach of the Liverpool girls swimming and diving team, and of course Aya McIntyre here of the diving team, and also a swimmer of history, myself, Dance Tora. Wake up call with Dance Tora outside on location in Annapolis every single month, celebrating Liverpool Warriors Athletics. Ladies and gentlemen, can we give some love to Aya and Will for being here today? Sorry, Aya, I think those streams were for Will. <laughs> we'll talk with you all soon. We have Coach coming up next. Thank you both. Thank you. Appreciate it.